Hello, Oscillator Sync here. As any good sommelier will tell you, an exquisite meal can be elevated to new heights by pairing it with the perfect wine. Similarly, a delicious synth patch can be further enhanced with the application of the perfect effect. In this video, I would like to serve up a three course meal of synth tones, and I will be pairing each serving with an effect that I feel enhances the patch. Mmm, delicious. The synth that I will be using today is the diminutive, quirky and characterful Stylophone Gen X1, and I'll be choosing my effects from the tasting menu available on the ever popular Zoom Multistomp MS70 CDR. This is a sponsored video. It's sponsored by Dubrek, who make the Stylophone Gen X1. Uh, they approached me and asked me whether I wanted to create some content about it, and I said yes. Um, Rather than asking for a, a fee to make this video, instead I have asked uh, Dubrek to send me a bunch of uh, Gen X ones, they've sent me four, uh, which I, um, I'm going to give away to uh, viewers of the channel. So stick around to find out how you can enter the giveaway to get one of these for free. For our first course, I thought we would start down at the bottom end of things with a bass sound. Uh, so I've got everything set to a fairly neutral position at the moment. And you'll notice I haven't got the stylophone tuned that low. Uh, and that's because on the side here, we have uh, these three buttons and these two bottom ones here allow us to engage a sub oscillator, either one octave or two octaves down or, or both. Um, so um, the two octaves down, which you would think is kind of the bassist one, and I guess you'd be right sounds like that which is a good sound uh, but I find that to get a punchier sound just the one octave down kind of sounds more sort of together more sort of integrated with the main oscillator your mileage may vary of course so the kind of bass sound that I want to create here is kind of a donk donk kind of sort of slightly funky kind of uh, bass sound um, so the first thing we're going to want to do, of course, is drop our cutoff to get a darker kind of sound there. And then we're going to want to set our envelope to be quite plucky, sort of, as I say, sort of a donk donk kind of sound. Um, so uh, for a plucky sound, we want our attack turned all the way down and then we want to bring our decay down pretty low. And just balance the decay and the cutoff to get the kind of pluck that we want. So a longer decay is going to give us a, a, a sort of a slower descent, less of a plucky sound. Uh, and if we go very low on the decay, it's going to be probably a bit, maybe a bit too snappy, I don't know. Something around there kind of feels about right uh, for me. Now, um, it might be tempting, tempting even, to um, add some kind of squelch to the sound by turning up our resonance, which is a perfectly legitimate thing to want to do, but be aware, as soon as we start cranking the resonance, you'll hear there that our bottom end kind of drops off. I don't know whether this filter is based on a Moog ladder filter, but it kind of has that sort of bottom end reducing resonance. Um, so for my part, I think for this, I'm going to keep the resonance at low um, or off, actually, I think probably. Uh, we don't need any delay, I don't think, and we probably don't want any wobble to our sound. We want our bass sound to be sort of quite solid. Uh, so we'll keep the depth and rate turned down here, make sure the pitch is turned all the way down on our envelope. And I think this is a nice bass sound to be getting on with. Let's just try it with the two octaves down just to see if we would prefer it. See, it's got a bit more low end, but it's not quite as punchy, I don't think. Maybe both together. Kind of loses definition a bit. I think just the one octave down. It's probably what I'm after for this sound.
So in terms of our effects pairing uh, to go with this sound, I'm going to go with some stereo chorus. So we're going from this to this. Which is a cool sound indeed. Um, I think this particular recipe uh, probably draws influence from the Roland Juno uh, synths with their built-in uh, chorus, stereo chorus, which added so much um, depth and interest to the sound. Now conventional knowledge tells us that in the context of a mix we don't want to have our bass too wide. Um, you tend to want to keep the bass in the middle of the mix and we've certainly put our bass out towards the side but because the stylophone isn't the weightiest of synths in the world um, we're not going to be getting in the way of like our kick drum so actually I think having our bass going out a bit wider is a really really nice thing. Uh, in terms of the settings that I've got here I've got my depth turned quite uh, quite high. If we turn it down, we still kind of get that uh, stereo widening, but we don't really get so much of the swirl up high. Just got a little bit more movement. The rate I've got quite low. Um, if we turn it up high, we get a much more obvious wobble. Which might be your thing but I think for bass sounds you want to get the widening and just a bit of movement rather than an obvious wobble. Uh, my mix I've got turned up pretty high but we can adjust that to taste for the dry sound. You don't want quite the same level of obvious chorusing. We can have that set more sort of 50-50 but I quite like it. Quite high. Something like that. And what we've got on the other page, uh, just a tone control. We can get things brighter. Don't think that sounds good. So we'll go nice and dark there. So without our pairing and with our pairing. Delicious. For our main course, I thought we would go for a pad sound. Now, pad sounds, I grant you, are usually reserved for polyphonic synthesizers, which the Gen X one certainly isn't. Um, but uh, with some tricks, we can get a pretty cool paddy sound that we can uh, make use of. Certainly would work well if it was sampled and then replayed polyphonically, but we can also get some sort of pseudo polyphonic hangover uh, in order to get um, some of that vibe. So I'm back with a kind of neutral sound here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just bring our filter down to a sort of middling position. And what I want to get is a slow movement uh, in our sound. Um, and for a slow movement, we want to have our envelope set attack set very long and the decay set very long. We don't want pitch movement necessarily. Uh, but now we should get a nice sweeping sound on the filter. And here there we have a nice long journey up and a long journey down. Cool, we might want to add a little bit of resonance and we're not so worried about the bottom end on this patch so that's not such a concern. Great stuff. Uh, on the side here, as I mentioned, we have these two switches which allow us to add a sub oscillator and perhaps we'll perhaps we will add a sub oscillator in. Uh, but the one I'm more interested in is uh, this top um, button here and this engages a kind of cross mod into the sound which allows us to get much richer um, oscillator sound, almost like a chorus as it happens. Um, so without and with And uh, this cross mod is controlled by the rate of the LFO. So if we turn this up, it should become a little bit more obvious. Yeah, see, we've almost like a chorusing sound. Really cool sound. 
And while we're here, we might want to add a tiny bit of pitch wobble in there again, just for that added richness. So we just bring the depth up on the LFO, which will bring in some pitch modulation as well. Like only the tiniest little bit. I've barely nudged that up. Just want to barely be able to hear it. Should we try um, some sub oscillator there? Maybe the one octave down. Yeah, I can vibe with that. I think that's nice. Um, so we need to address the fact that we have, you know, what is currently a very monophonic pad sound. So we're going to try and get around this by making use of the built-in delay. So I'm allowing myself to add some seasoning, if you like, uh, with the built-in delay here. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to turn the level up a little bit, maybe just halfway and turn the delay time up a bit and the feedback up. And this should allow us to get some sort of hangover on the notes that we play. I'm just going to adjust the level so that the, the, the delay sound is kind of in line with the um, clean sound. And maybe bring that delay time down a little bit. And then bring the feedback up. Now this feedback will self oscillate, so we have to be a little bit careful not to go all the way up. I think we're okay there. So now we can kind of play chords if we move across the notes. To get a kind of paddy sound, right? So that's um, uh, a pretty nice uh, pseudo pad sound, especially given that this is a monophonic synthesizer. Now my effect pairing for this is probably pretty obvious. It is probably the effect pairing that you would most associate with a pad sound. And I'm going to be adding a bit of reverb. In this case, I've gone with a plate reverb, but um, many different reverbs, of course, are available. So uh, let's have a listen. This is without. And with. Make it a little bit darker. You've kind of got that sort of fluttering of the delay happening in the background there. Now, uh, I will note that this is a stereo reverb, which is going to uh, make a lot of difference uh, if you're trying to widen the sound of this monophonic pad. Um, a mono reverb would work fine as well, but stereo reverbs just add stereo width, of course. So in terms of how I've got this set at the moment, um, pre-delay is basically all the way down at um, the bottom. So uh, pre-delay will have a delay before the uh, reverb kind of kicks in on any particular note. What you can use the pre-delay for is kind of um, separating the dry sound from the reverb tail. So it kind of sounds like you're close to something in a big room, if you like. So you hear that the reverb there is coming in a little bit later and that might work for this sound, I don't know. Whereas a shorter pre-decay uh, delay, sorry, uh, would usually make the reverb sound more integrated with the dry sound. I actually like that with a little bit more of a pre-decay actually. Yeah, uh, my decay is set sort of in the middle, so it's not the most epic reverb of all time, but we can make it more epic if we wanted, if we wanted a much longer tail here. I'm finding that a little bit bright now. Um, so uh, actually, if we come into the second page here, we can adjust the damping here so we can turn the height damping down a bit. So we still have a long reverb, but not quite as bright.
Yeah. Now, as an alternative, um, because it's nice to have alternatives, if you wanted something a little bit uh, different that would add more of an additional sound on top of our reverb sound, I also have here, um, if you'd like to have a taste, uh, a reverse reverb as well. So reverse reverb is um, a weird effect that, um, well, you'll hear. kind of hear that you've got this reverb sort of fading in on its own I think it's maybe a little bit harder to manage adding a lot to the sound um, but if we bring our plate back in as well not that I'm suggesting that you mix your drinks but ambient sound and as I say by playing our chord tones appropriately we can get kind of chords out of this which I think is a very satisfying main course. So hopefully your appetite is uh, suitably whetted and uh, you'd like to know how you can get your hands on a Gen X one for yourself for free. Um, if you take a look in the description of the uh, video, you should be able to find a link to one of those social media raffle kind of uh, pages where you can enter a raffle to win one of these devices by following me on YouTube and following me on Twitter and like me on Facebook and all of that kind of jazz. Um, so you can enter there. I will announce the winners on my various um, social media platforms and uh, hopefully get them shipped out as soon as possible. I'm probably making a mistake by not limiting uh, where in the world you can enter. Um, so it's probably going to cost me loads of money in shipping them out, but uh, that is the life of someone who is um, bad at doing YouTube like a business, like me. Um, so take a look in the description, follow the link, um, enter the raffle, and hopefully you will be able to win one of these quirky little friends. So I think it's very much time for dessert. And uh, for dessert, I'm going to propose that we have a lead sound, uh, which I guess more than anything else is what the stylophone is traditionally known for. Um, I'm going to go for kind of a vocally kind of lead sound, um, uh, almost like a maybe like a pseudo theremin-y kind of thing going on here. Uh, so we're going to be doing a couple of things to enhance that kind of vocal quality. So I'm back here with a kind of neutral sound on the stylophone. Um, I have tuned it up a little bit because we're more at the top end of our, uh, our spectrum here. And the first thing I'm going to do to introduce some more vocal quality is get a bit of resonance happening with the filter. So I'm gonna bring our resonance up to half to begin with, um, which is ooh, a bit stingy when our cutoff is all the way up, but I'm gonna bring the cutoff more into the middle and find kind of hear those sort of vocal vowel like wow wow kind of sounds around here and this can be the kind of thing that really um you could be performing as you're playing um uh, the lead as well now you can hear 
There's a bit of a tweak or tweet at the start of the sound there, and that's the um, envelope still affecting the cutoff. And we just want to soften that a little bit, so I'm just going to... bring our attack up a little bit which will take that away but that has now brightened up everything because now the envelope is bringing us up so let's just find more of our vocal sound again like so okay um the next kind of thing that we want to do to introduce that vocal quality is, of course, add a little bit of vibrato. Um, so uh, let's uh, do that by making use of the LFO, which is our pitch um, modulation, vibrato being a pitch modulation. So we'll bring the rate, the depth up first. So you can hear it moving around a little bit and we'll bring the rate up. We want to get kind of that sort of natural uh, kind of rate. That's kind of our target. Which is quite fast actually. And we just want to adjust our depth. Generally speaking with vibrato, uh, you can afford a higher depth if the rate is faster. Uh, if you have a slower rate and a high depth, it tends to feel a bit seasick, um, but we can push the depth a little bit higher. If things are feeling a bit sort of wobbly and seasick, increasing the rate of the LFO is generally going to help things out. And again, this is probably something that we can be performing uh, as we play. Like so. Um, I don't think we really want a sub oscillator this time. It doesn't track so high at the higher anyway. Uh, the cross modulation might be nice bit much it's probably more of a um, electro lead sound which is cool but we kind of lose that vocal quality okay um, so uh, that's I think our basic patch and the effect that I'd like to pair with this patch is something which I think will uh, further enhance the vocal tonality of uh, the sound and what that is going to be is a phaser. So uh, without and with. So we're getting a lot more of that kind of vocal vowel sound. So a phaser is a modulation effect which is which is related to things like chorus and flanges but whereas chorus and flanges make use of very small delay times and modulating that delay time phases are making use of an all pass filter and uh, modulating the phase relationship between the dry sound and the uh, wet sound giving us this more sort of vowely kind of sound uh, which is very nice <laughs> We want to tune this up a little bit further, even. Um, now, uh, if we wanted to get a bit more ambience to this, of course, we could add a reverb um, uh, on top of this, but maybe as a, um, a digestif at the end of our meal, if you like. Let's um, use our delay on the stylophone to create. Uh, sort of an, an additional pseudo reverb here and to do that we can turn on our uh, delay and if we set our delay time to zero and our feedback up quite high we should I'll just off the face first ok 
like a kind of a pseudo <laughs> reverb there as well. Which, if you want those sci-fi sounds, is... Very appropriate, and with the phaser again, we're flying off into space to the Forbidden Planet. Anyway, I think that has um, concluded our meal. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it and found it interesting, as always, a like on the video and a subscribe to the channel is massively appreciated, and it will help you uh, not miss out on any upcoming synth fun. Remember to check out the link in the description of this video uh, if you want to win one of these Gen X1s. And otherwise, um, as always, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.